Okay, I've been working off camera a little bit more on the facing and the tip rail. Now I've got enough meat here that I think that I can um, reshape it at least a tad. See if I line up the right corner, you can see you know, the, how much material we have here to work with. Um, so. This mouthpiece is not going to sound any different from all this work, but the player will notice a little tad better response. So it's just a little tune up. Cut most of it out. So all this is is the metal reeds that I sell and I use a black magic marker. And I use this side when I'm working on metal and the other side when I'm looking at dark hard rubber. It makes it easier to see. Well, I don't think I can get all of that out yet. made it better. Got about probably something like half of it out. so much better. So now we have what looks like a thin tip rail there. I can take a light pass on that to thicken that up a little bit and then a medium thin tip rail kind of more or less in the from there over to the right. So we can file out and sand that out from the inside very lightly. I can also scrape it with a uh, pocket knife. I do that sometimes too. So I'm very lightly angling this file, and uh, I think to um, you know take the high spots down on this tip rail, make it thinner, and more uniform. Also rocking it back so that I kind of blend it all in. Don't want to change the baffle. Just kind of blend it back into to where it was. See what I'm going to do is make it all the same thickness as the thin spot. And then we'll take just a light pass when we're done on the uh, sandpaper. And then I'll give it a little extra thickness. Okay, after that I like to switch to sanding sticks. Use my coarse one.
I guess that first one was one more like 120, then it went to 220, and now this is 320. Okay, go to all. my finer stick, this is a 500 grit. Make sure there's no edges around there. Another thing I didn't mention is the side rail thickness. I haven't touched that. Um, on this piece, it's pretty good. Um, you know, it's a little thick back here, but reason I'm vibrating back there, so that's not much to, to worry about. With with this rail kind of veers off to the right a little bit, um, it's nothing I can fix, you know. I mean, I could take a little material off on the inside, but on this piece, it's, these are fine where they're at. Um, the modern links are thicker and more wavy, and I kind of uh, reworked them to look more like this, and we're done. So... So I'll take another uh, set of uh, readings for the facing curve and see see where I'm at. But maybe done here. Okay, this is uh, where we are. Let me make this tar old target curve a little thicker so you can see it. Okay, the dark blue is where we're at. The mag magenta was the original curve of best fit through it. Um, I've straightened out most of the flat spot here. There still looks a little bump there. What I'm going to do now is recalculate the target curve, regenerate a new best fit um, through these points. Okay, so what we have then is... I, st I still have a bump back here that I have to work on, even though I've been cutting it some. Um, and it looks like, you know, this is a little low, this is a little low, and there's a bump there, so I can bring that in. This is straightened out here, uh, where there used to be a bump. The tip is now up to 106. It's not really... Um, it measures an increase, and I did go a little bit, but it, a lot of that is from... Uh, you know, it stayed at 104 when I made the tip rail thicker, and then when I thinned the tip rail back uh, to where it was, it's now about where it was when it started, it measures a little bit more. So the tip rail, uh, you know, that, incre that increased the uh, tip opening. Uh, facing got a, a tad longer, and there's an <laughs> another little crooked spot here at the third reading. So I still got a little bit of work to do. A few more passes to get it perfect. It'll play just fine the way it is, uh, but I, I like to kind of get it the best I can on my numbers and then uh, send it off to to my client. 
Okay, I now have the facing curve pretty much right on the money. It, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Probably more meticulous than it really needs to be. But on these old vintage leaks, you like to do them up right. I'm going to file a little underneath here. This is what I call the wall. Should be a ramp uh, undercut there. Makes it more free blow, and I like to make this even. It's a little thin spot right here, and the rest is a little thicker. So if there's a lot to take off. I go to the rotary tool. But the rotary tool, you can make a lot of mistakes very, very quickly with that, so a little hand filing is a lot less dangerous to the mouthpiece and you. Okay, that's nice. even. I could thin it some, but rather leave the material in this. Looking great. Now I'll uh, take out that shank dink. Okay, break out the blacksmith tools for the shank dink. I use a set of socket wrenches. And uh, this one Maybe all we need, it's got a little shoulder on it, doesn't want to go any past that. Maybe just a little bit of pressure from this. Oop, got in there. A little wiggle up on the, on the spot. Gee, that looks good already. Let me kind of wiggle that around. You know, this would a little spin on there or whatever, but we look good already. I could do some hammer work, but uh, I wouldn't use, I have a brass on one end and nylon on the other. I usually use the nylon end and that's enough, but we're round already, so that's why I usually don't charge for that. If you've got, got the right tools, they just pop right out. So we're done. I'm not even going to probably cosmetic finish this. I, I could polish it up a little bit with flits. I guess I will. Maybe I will. And uh, makes a good first impression when you open up. But, so there we have a perfect Florida double man.